Episode 3, in this episode, we'll be creating our first block. Alright, so we're going to get started by creating an enum and putting it into the list package. And that's going to be called block list. And then we're going to put a semicolon to end it. And then we're going to start off our constructor. And it's going to be a block list with a parameter block with type block. And we're going to create private fields for block and properties. And make sure to import block from minecraft.net and properties from uh, block.properties. Then you're going to set block equal to block. And you're actually going to set properties equal to new properties dot create from block. And here we're just get, getting the block by doing public block get block and returning block. And then we're going to get the display name. And that's going to return block dot get name text component dot get string. Then we're going to get the resource location by doing block dot get registry name. Then we're going to return the properties. So we're going to do get properties and then return properties. And then we're going to get the string version of the resource location. And we're just going to put it up there for organization. And we're going to create a new class under a new package called block. And this is going to be called block base. And this will extend block. <clears throat> Make sure to import block from minecraft.net. And we're going to start the constructor and it is going to have a string and a property. And we'll throw the property into the super class. And we'll set the registry name to name. And then we're going to do a public static void register block. And that's going to be a final registry event register block and we'll call it event. And make sure to put the subscribe event above the method. So it will be called. I forgot to do it here, but I came back and did it later. And we'll make a for each loop for block list value. And we'll sort through the block list values. The same that we did for the item list. And then we'll do value.getBlock. And now we can create our first block. We'll call it tutorial block. And this will have a argument for a new block base. Uh, 
And here I'm just realizing my error and fixing it. <clears throat> and this takes a string and a property. The string will be the same as the enum variable name. And the property will be a little different than it was for item. And of course, with an enum, you can't actually do autocomplete. So I'm doing this off memory. We'll create it of uh, material type iron. That's if you wanted a metal like material. And we'll set the harvest level to one, which would be a stone. Harvest level zero would be wood. And we'll set the tool to pickaxe. And we'll set the hardness and resistance to three float. And you can see um, all of the different variables you can put there by just control clicking on one of them and it'll tell you all of them. And to see what the other Minecraft blocks have, you can uh, just create a variable right there and control click on it to see its default. So an iron block has a hardness of five and a resistance of six. I just set mine to one for both. Resistance is how much it has for blasts, like uh, explosions, and the hardness is from player interaction. Obsidian has the highest of both. Now we're going to create a new package called block state. And a new package under models called block. And a new package under textures also called block with no S on either. And then we'll open up the default Minecraft assets and we'll go to block state and we'll look for the iron block. We'll copy that and then we'll create a new file with the variable name dot JSON and we'll paste that in there and change it appropriately. So we'll grab the mod ID and the variable name. Mod ID colon block forward slash variable name. We'll save that. And here we'll create a new class for the block item and it'll be under the item package and we'll call it block item base and for the super class we will put it as block item and click finish now we'll create our constructor it'll have a block as its parameter And for the super, we'll throw the block and a new item dot properties. And we'll set the group to our group that we listed in references. 
The block item is the version of the block that is in your inventory. So it's the item version of it. In the regular block is only the one that is on the ground. So we'll set registry name to the block dot get registry name. And then we'll go back to our register and under register item, we will register the new block item. We'll do a for each loop by looping through all the blocks in block list. And we'll register a new item that is a new block item base. And we'll put in the value.get block. And here I'm just putting in comments. And now we'll create the model. So go back to the assets under models and block, look up the iron block, copy it. And variable name dot JSON. <clears throat> and paste it in and change the location. And there I'm just pressing Windows key V on Windows, which brings up my uh, paste bin, paste history. And here I'm just adding the name. So it would be under block.modid.resource name. And we'll just call it tutorial block. And now we'll create the texture. I'm just going to open up Photoshop. You can use any image editor that you feel comfortable with. And again, I'll be leaving the Photoshop files in the description. And the file has to be a 16 by 16. That's at least what default Minecraft textures are. And we'll try to make it the same color as the ingot. This step is completely up to your preference. Considering I made it after the iron block, I am doing a metal like style for it. So I put a darker ring around the edge and then I add some texture by coming in and going through the corners and through the middle and then I'm going to add a noise variable, noise modifier. And I just set the noise to 2.5 and put it under a smart filter. Now I'm going to add a hue and saturation modifier. That way I can change the color and use this for future needs.
And again, we'll just try and find that same color. I could, of course, open up the uh, ingot file that I used and use the exact same numbers. But I'm just going to eyeball it. And we'll just open up where our texture folder is. Show in System Explorer. And we'll copy that URL and paste it up there and make sure to name it the same as the resource location. <clears throat> and I'll just refresh there by hitting F5. And now we'll have to create the model for the item. So here I go to the Minecraft default assets again and go to models item and look for the iron block. And then I'll copy that and paste it in there. And then I will change the name as necessary. And there I did forget to change the name, but I did so behind the scenes, I fix it later. And here I'm adding that subscribe event that I forgot to earlier. And here we're gonna open up the Gradle tax and run the client. And I'll fast forward through this because again, it can take quite a while. <clears throat> to make this run a little bit faster, you could generate the Eclipse runs. The only problem with that is it won't build the solution every time you run, which can cause some issues. And as you can see right there, we got ourselves our tutorial block. You can place it, you can break it. The only thing is it will not drop an item when you break it with the appropriate tool. And we'll be doing that in the next episode where we talk about loot tables. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. That is gonna do it. <laughs>